Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Carmen from Carmen Yen Letterings. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I love calligraphy and I love beautiful brush pens. So I'm so privileged to be swatching these colors from Karen Markers, the Pigment Deco Brush. These brand new markers that just came onto the market. Have you seen these markers yet? These are the new Karen's markers. They're brush pens markers, but they're very pigmented and they're acrylic paint that can change a whole level of painting. So thank you so much Karen Marker for sending me these markers to test out. Um, it's not a sponsor post, so everything that I say in here will be my true opinion of how I feel about the brush marker, but they are absolutely gorgeous. Come on, take a look at the box here. So this is one box out of the seven. So this is the basic color boxes. Okay, so you can see at the side here, it says it's basic color. Okay, and if you open up the basic color, it comes with the box. And once you open it up, at the lid, it gives you a place to paint the swatches on top of white or black. So it's like different color background because the colors are very, very pigmented. It's, it's a quilly paint, right? So it's supposed to be able to use from on dark surfaces as well. And it also gives you, if you ever change your mind off the swatches or if you want to mix up the order, you can tape them according to the order that you want. It is just so cute. Um, and they even give you this sticker line thing because at the side of the box, you can tell that there is this color thing. So if you actually change the order, even if you change your boxes, like sometimes some people like to arrange it for different boxes, you can redo it on the sticker and stick it on top. So it's like super cool. Okay. Um, so if you take a look at this, these are the markers, all right? So there are 12 of them per boxes. And as I said, it comes with seven boxes. So I don't know if I have a good way to show you what the real box looks like, but I'm gonna try to bring it over. I don't think my frame is big enough for me to really show you the whole thing. I'm going to slide this. So this is the actual, it comes with like a stand. It's so pretty. It can be furniture. Okay. And I'm going to readjust my focus. All right. So, um, I told you, I took out the first box. So this first box goes here. Let's see if I can do it. All right. So this is the first box that has the 12 basic color that I showed you. But if you take a look at it, there are the passion color theme, the violet blue colors, natural colors, nude color so those are more skin color the gray color as well as the pastel colors my daughter was like oh mommy this is the nicest one can i have it right. okay so as you can see i have um just draw a template here so what i said just now each box um has like a specific theme so this one says like basic color so what i have in mind is that when i build my grid i would have so this first 12 boxes would be for the basic color. So I would actually write the basic color here and then I would do the color swatches within the boxes. I kind of made the box um, two centimeters by two centimeters here. And so there is a 12 grit there and then I repeat the process and made seven of them in total. And what I have in mind is that um, I would obviously put the, the number and the name underneath at the bottom here. And I wanted to show you, it's actually an amazing marker. So this is just a rough paper. And I wanted to show you that I'm probably going to go in and do like a really solid color and then some that are not as solid. So I'm just gonna, I can just quickly draw the grid. So it was like a two by like a two by two boxes. So if I quickly do this and just to show you what I have in mind, and then I'll probably speed up the process a whole lot. So you don't have to sit here staring at me during the whole time. I'm just going to focus better. All right. So say if I'm picking one color and say I'm doing purple. Okay. So in my mind, this is what I wanted to do. I'm probably going to kind of divide it into like a two thirds and I would have some paper towel ready. I'm going to use a water, a water brush, like an, an aqua brush here as, as the brush that I'm using. And I was thinking that I would probably do a solid color right at the top. So about one third of the box, I'm going to color it, fold in fully saturated. These are alcohol, um, not alcohol, not. these are acrylic paint pen, right? So you can totally use it for painting. 
And so I'm going to do it solid, but at the same time, I'm just going to use the water, water brush, just to kind of water it down. So for this kind of the second third, I'm going to steal some color from the top and just bring it down. You see how pigmented they are. They're so nice. I know they're not watercolor, like that we really need, like we, it's hardly that we're going to use it like not fully saturated. Because you know how for acrylic paint, it's actually usually quite solid and pigmented. But I just wanted to see how it is because later on I'm gonna I can show you how to you know um blend and stuff so I'm just gonna clean it off a little bit and just really water it down and see how it's not super saturated and let this be so this is probably what I'm gonna do with my color swatch and then once it's dry at the bottom I'm going to write the coat number so if you actually take a look at the pen here okay you would see that it comes with the coat and the name. I don't know if I can fit the full name in there, but I would definitely put the color coat on it just so that I can see exactly what color like the swatch look like. So this is the first box and this first box is the basic color. I'm going to do the title at the top here. If you're curious, this is my um, Morden print. This is kind of like my go-to font that I would use. You can get worksheets to learn how to write like that. Later on, I can make tutorials. You can check out my other YouTube videos for tutorials on how to do these. Oh yeah, one thing that they said I forgot to do is you're supposed to shake the color because sometimes when they like they, they suggest you to kind of put it sideways but they suggest you to mix up the color before you use it so you can actually tell this is white but it wasn't really white it was more like I don't know why it has some gray color in it okay probably for white I'm not even going to bother with the watercolor brush I'm just going to do the white But I find that this is probably going to be so useful. I'll probably use up the white one so quickly because I love the blending effect um, with it and, and, you know, just changing the color and stuff. Okay, I've done the white, but I'm not going to do the next one, which is the yellow, just because they're not dried yet. I don't want the color to run into each other because this is the color swatch. This is actually my go to when I'm going to decide to use wet paint color. So I'm just going to do I'm going to skip one and do the orange one first. So don't forget to shake it. So it is a brush pen tip, which is awesome. And so I'm going to take my aqua brush. I'm just going to kind of bring it down. I am using watercolor paper. Just, I don't, I don't know why I chose this, but um, from the package, it says that it actually can work on many different materials. So that's yet for me to discover. So I'm going to have to figure out what I wanted to try to make using it. I did try it on seashell and it actually worked quite well. Not so much on rocks. I'm surprised that it didn't work as much on rocks, but maybe because the color that I picked wasn't pigmented enough. All right, so then I'm going to skip one, skip the red and go straight. And I'm also keeping the, um, the original order from when it comes in. I have a hard time with, you know, sorting out how do I want to arrange my color. The boxes are arranged so nicely, I almost wanted to keep it as a theme. Like, you know how, like, sometimes if, if it already has a really nice theme color, you can almost do your painting and you know all the color already goes really well together. So I don't want to mix it up, but then at the same time, my anal retentiveness is kind of making me like, okay, I want to put them all in rainbow colors, all of them, all 84 of them in a certain order, but like, I'm not touching it right now until I got a document down like what order it came with from the manufacturer. Maybe later on I, I, I would change it up. I don't know yet. It's hard to make changes. You feel like I don't want to mess it up. So that's the brown.
Now this is the beautiful color chart that I've completed. I love doing swatches because it gives me a very clear idea of what color actually look like. Because sometimes you would notice that the cap lid might not exactly be the same as what it, what it looks like. So this is the, the first one. If you compare them, they're, they're actually pretty close, but I do still like having the paper here that I can clearly see what it is when I'm trying to pick colors to use. And just now I promise that I'm also going to show you a little bit of how I would do the blending. And let's just take a look at the instructions that they gave me because the, um, it comes with an instruction package of how to store the markers, how to blend them and things like that. So this is the instruction that it came with in the box. It teaches you how to store it. They are suggesting you to store it with the cap in the original box and keep it laying flat. And they suggest that every time if you use your marker, you want to tilt your box slightly with the cap side facing downward. So this is the box, right? So the lid is kind of on the top side of the box. They said that especially if you've used it, they kind of suggest you to tilt it slightly higher up, but then store it horizontally within the package, right? And another thing that I already mentioned is make sure you shake it. If you actually take a look at the marker, sometimes like a white marker might have like a little bit pink at the top. It's because it's almost like if you have like a fresh can of paint and when you go to Home Depot or something, they would shake it up for you. And if you actually let it settle down like and, and just place your can of paint there for a while, you would notice that um, all the colors are like totally different. But if you mix it up again, it would look like the color that you pick. That's exactly the same thing. So there, at, when I was doing the swatch, I've noticed that um, I think one of the color almost look like a black color, but it, but really it should be like a brownish color, right? So it's because I didn't shake it well enough. I might have to fix it afterwards. And how do I fix it? I actually made a mistake here. So I actually cut up another two by two box and I just glue it back on, right? So like, so that, that's something you need to watch out for. Make sure you shake it before you use it. Um, they tell you how to remove the paint. They suggest alcohol. Um, how to fixate the paint on the on the markers. So they are UV, very UV resistant, but it might fade after a long time. So they were telling you how to treat it. And the other thing is how to mix it. Okay, so they're suggesting that you can take two tip and put them together from one color to another. And you can follow, you can, you can then draw it. And then if you want to clean it, just dip it in water and draw it on paper. Okay. So I don't want to try doing that, but what I found is that I find this way really, really helpful is if I have a palette. Okay. It's not the cleanest palette, but I think I'm just using it to demonstrate. So I'm going to use it with the basic color. So I'm just going to open this box up. All right. And then we're just going to try to show you just how I was thinking to do mixing. Okay. So I just have a little, um, color card here. I let's say if we wanted to do yellow and say blue, let's pick this blue. Okay. So I'm just going to pick these two colors. All right. So if I have pure yellow, it looks like that. Okay. I'm just going to zoom you in so you can see better. This is pure yellow. Okay. And if I have the pure um, turquoise, it looks like that. Okay. I didn't shake it well enough. All right. So what I find helpful is that if I actually do the dots on here and mix the color, I think I can be a lot more precise on the color that I wanted. So say for examples, and I, I, I'm a science person. I don't know if you know, I, I teach physics for a living. So everything has to be somewhat calculated and scientific. Okay, so for example, if I want more blue, so I'm going to do three dots of blue and then one dot of yellow and I'm going to mix it up. So this one has more blue, less yellow. If I mix it up with my aqua brush again, you can pick it up and mix the color. So this is more blue less yellow. You can make it more saturated by putting more color in it, but I just want to show you kind of the method of blending. Okay. Another way is that if I do more yellow, so if I do three dots of yellow, one dot of green or blue, sorry, turquoise, mix it up. 
I'm totally getting another shade of green. That looks like this. Okay, so I just like blending like that. But I'm sure you can, the other way that I've tried is, which you could also consider doing, is you can wet your paper a little bit. And then do like say more turquoise on one side, less yellow, and kind of bring the two colors together. Then you can kind of do the blending as well. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you find the tutorial helpful if you ever want to make your own color chart for markers that you love. And don't forget to click the subscribe button if you're into anything like calligraphy, hand lettering, DIY craft, and all the fun stuff. And make sure you like and share this video. Have a good one.